This problem is similar to problem number one on the ice cream cone. We have the same solid. It's bounded by x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 4 and z squared equals x squared plus y squared with z greater than or equal to 0. In this case, the density of any point xyz inside is given by the function rho of xyz. Unlike the previous problem, we are to set up iterated triple integrals for the mass of this solid with each of the six different orders of integration. From the previous lesson, ice cream cone problem number one, we know the solid in question is the intersection of a cone and a hemisphere. Since z is greater than or equal to zero, they can be described by the inequality z between zero and the square root of four minus x squared minus y squared, and z greater than or equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. And their intersection looks like this. The problem boils down to giving different representations of the solid, which I called S, such as this one here, where x is between a and b, y is between two functions of x, and z is between two functions of x and y. The mass would then be given by this formula here. This form results from choosing x and y first, and then choosing z. In the previous lesson, we were able to determine a, b, c of x, d of x, e of x, y, and f of x, y by considering the shadow in the x, y plane. Starting with the shadow, we determined that the points inside the solid can be described by these inequalities. We chose x first between negative square root of 2 and square root of 2. Then we chose y in the shadow circle. And finally, we chose z between the cone and the hemisphere. From this, it follows that we can represent the mass of the solid by the iterated integral here. By symmetry in x and y, we could also write the integral this way. In this case, we chose y between square root of 2 and negative square root of 2, and then chose x in the shadow circle, and finally chose z. Now suppose instead of choosing x and y first in the shadow circle, we wish to choose x and z first, or y and z first. In that case, we would need a shadow in a plane parallel to the xz plane or parallel to the yz plane. Because of the symmetry of our solid, such a shadow would be equivalent to a cross-section in one of those planes. Let's consider choosing y and z first. By symmetry, the same reasoning can be applied if we choose x and z first. In order to see what choices are available, we will look at the cross-section in the yz plane, which results when we set x equal to 0. This cross-section, where x is 0, would consist of points below the circle y squared plus z squared equals 4 and above the graph of z equals absolute value of y because z is the square root of 0 squared plus y squared, which is the square root of y squared, and that, of course, is absolute value of y. If we solve those two equations for y and z, we find that the points of intersection are negative square root of 2 square root of 2 and positive square root of 2 square root of 2. 
We also know the z-intercept is 2 because the top curve is a circle of radius 2. If we choose y first, then it must be chosen between negative square root of 2 and positive square root of 2. Having chosen y, we now can choose z between absolute value of y and the square root of 4 minus y squared. Now, if our point ends up inside the blue region, that happens if z is less than or equal to the square root of 2, then x must be chosen so that it is inside the cone. Since the equation of the cone is z squared equals x squared plus y squared, this means that x is between negative the square root of z squared minus y squared and positive the square root of z squared minus y squared. On the other hand, if our point ends up in the red region, where z is greater than square root of 2, then x must be chosen so it is inside the sphere. Since the equation of the sphere is x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals 4, this means that x is between negative the square root of 4 minus y squared minus z squared and positive the square root of 4 minus y squared minus z squared. Thus, we must use two integrals to represent the mass if y and then z are chosen first. Likewise, if x and then z are chosen first, we have this. Now suppose we choose z first and then x or y. The choice of x and y depends on whether z is chosen in the red zone or in the blue zone. If z is chosen in the red zone, that is, z is some number z0, where z0 is greater than the square root of 2, then the cross-section determined by the plane z equals z0 is bounded by the circle x squared plus y squared equals 4 minus z0 squared. In this plane, we must choose x and y in the bounding circle that has radius square root of 4 minus z0 squared. If we choose x first, it must be chosen between negative the radius and positive the radius, and then we must choose y between negative square root of 4 minus z0 squared minus x squared and positive the square root of 4 minus z0 minus x squared, as you can see in the picture. Likewise, if we choose y first, it must be chosen between negative the radius and positive the radius of that circle. And then we must choose x between negative square root of 4 minus z0 squared minus y squared and positive square root of 4 minus z0 squared minus y squared. Thus, if we choose z between square root of 2 and 2, then we can compute the mass of the red part of our solid as follows. If z is chosen in the blue zone, that is, if z is some number z0, where z0 is less than or equal to the square root of 2, then the cross-section determined by the plane z equals z0 is bounded by the circle x squared plus y squared equals z0 squared. In this plane, we must choose x and y in the bounding circle of radius z0. If we choose x first, it must be chosen between negative z0 and positive z0. And then we must choose y between negative the square root of z0 squared minus x squared and positive the square root of z0 squared minus x squared. Likewise, if we choose y first, it must be chosen between negative z0 and positive z0. And then we must choose x between negative the square root of z0 squared minus y squared and positive the square root of z0 squared minus y squared.
Thus, if we choose z between 0 and square root of 2, then we can compute the mass of the blue part of our solid like this. Combining these, we can represent the mass of the solid as the blue plus the red mass. To summarize, our six representations of the mass are when x and y are chosen first in the xy shadow, we get this. When y and then z are chosen first by looking at the cross section where x equals 0, we get this. And when x and then z are chosen first by looking at the cross section where y equals 0, we get this. When z is chosen first and then x and y are chosen in the circle where the plane perpendicular to the z-axis cuts the solid, we get these two possibilities. So there you have it. There are six different ways to represent the mass by iterated triple integrals.